most of it's running down there, it's coming at this pail here. As you can see, that is obviously not barley. It's mum. I'm not sure how wild it's gonna be. Supplementing them with something else extra, just to keep the milk on them as best we can. The harvest is finally finished. Welcome back to another episode of Inverkami Weekly. Um, we're back this week after no episode yet again last week. Um, was ill at the weekend, um, which carried on for a few days, so I never got much of the things filmed. Um, so that's the reason why there wasn't one, but we're back this week. The only thing I got filmed last week was Dad finishing combining. Um, so got a little bit of footage to show you for the start of the video, and then we'll get into this week's fresh content. Welcome back. Today we are seed dressing. So that is our seed dresser up there. I'm just going to show you how we basically remove, this is all seed in this dryer here. Anything that we've got left to dry um, is seed barley basically. So you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, a little bit of grass, broken seed, not full seed. Um, so all that gets removed. You can see all the calf and stuff like that on top of the barley there just now. That is what the seed dresser, that, well not the seed dresser, that's what the dresser is aimed to take out. So it's not perfect, but it's just something that we do to try and clean the barley up a little bit before um, it goes away later. Well, almost mid next year now. So this is our dresser, it's all ran on old fashioned belts. Probably about three years older than I, uh, three years, three times older than I am this thing probably, but it does a job. So obviously, the barley gets put into this bin here, it's sucked all the way up into here, it gets riddled down through there, where there's a chamber of air that um, all the light stuff gets blown out. Barley comes down into here, it's riddled down through here. As you see, all the barley is going down through the riddles and all the thicker stuff comes down here and down a chute there and caught in the pail at the other side. So that's removing all the kind of stuff we don't want to be in it. Anything that's not going to grow basically. So I'll show you this side as well. So all the stuff that's running down there is coming at this pail here. As you can see that is obviously not barley. Um, just grass and stuff like that. So this is the bag here that's been picked out so far. All runs into there and that over takes it out over the side. Um, that's the stuff that's getting blown out there. So as I said, there's a big fan that's up there. Um, it removes all the light stuff and it goes down below out of the way. So that's pretty much how it works. So this is a cleaner seed here. As I said, it's not perfect. There's still the odd bit here and there, but it's a lot cleaner than it was previously. You can see there, that's a, that's a trailer there that is to be dressed as well. And then there's also um, stuff around the back that is still to be dry to go into the dresser. I just tested it just now. It's sitting at about 18%, so we need to get it back onto the dryer as quickly as we can. Um, before it heats, don't want it heating. Um, last thing we want to do is see it heating. So we'll basically we'll get all this off the dryer first, then we'll get the next batch in to dry. And then we can work away with that stuff that's in the cart there that's already dry. It can then be put into the dresser. So it's just about hopefully keeping the thing going. Um, touch wood, everything happens okay. But we have had issues, as you can imagine, with these old old belts breaking and stuff like that in the past. So fingers crossed things keep going. And we'll get that dryer cleaned, to, finished up and cleared off today. And then hopefully get the dryer filled again. So this is me back at the cleaner stuff. I don't know if you can see for yourself, but it is a lot cleaner. Um, nowhere near as much calf. Um, all the stuff that isn't barley, I would say probably about 95% of it's been removed. Obviously when it does go to the 
sold to the merchant. It'll go through a dresser properly there. That'll remove probably everything. Um, and it'll just remove the barley a bit. We just remove as much as we can here. We are set up and um, just leaves a lot cleaner sample. So that's the purpose of that. And I'll show you what's been removed so far. Out of that heap that's lying there, we have obviously the stuff in the bag that I showed you a minute ago. And then we've got this stuff here. So that stuff's been moved. That's all the light stuff that's been blown out by the fan. So all that, that little heap there, that's what's been removed from the barley so far. So I wouldn't like to say how much there is there next door. Probably something along the lines of, I don't know, maybe coming on the way of 10 ton maybe. So you can see how much stuff's been removed. Um, might be more than 10 ton there actually, I'm not sure. It's really hard to say. So you can see how much has been moved and that hopefully the dresser, as I said earlier, I don't know, hope we'll just run the rest of the day, fingers crossed. We'll get it dry and empty. It's Sunday morning and it's a beautiful morning. Just before I do the fence, I've got to move the fence back up for the girls. Um, Dad says there's a cow that's calved. So I've got in hand here, I'm fully prepared. Hopefully it drinks from the bottle. I'd like to try and make sure that they get colostrum as quickly as possible. Uh, I think they say it's within six hours. After that, it's kind of almost a waste of time. So there's no guarantee that this calf has sucked its mum. So what I want to do basically is make sure that it has got um, some colostrum in its belly as quickly as possible. So it's been born for a few hours now. It wouldn't have been born for as long as six hours. I know that. I'm not actually sure when it was born, but um, go and get a try. Hopefully it'll drink. Um, I'll see how I get on. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to record this, but I'll do my best. Obviously don't want to have to chew it, but it's safer just knowing I know that it's actually had a good drink than just leaving it and chancing it because this is what gives it all the antibodies to fight disease at a young age. If it doesn't get it quick enough, it'll be more vulnerable to scour, 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 um, and all kinds of other diseases. So just try to safeguard it here, but here he is with his mum. I'm not sure how wild it's gonna be. Quite wild by the looks of things. Right, let's see if I can tackle this. How am I going to tackle this? That's him tubed. Didn't manage to get it videoed. Don't know how everyone else gets on when they have to tube calves, um, if they struggle or not, but mine are always doing like sideways rolls or like that when I'm trying to feed them. They really struggle, like, as I said, it's, the, to be honest, the colostrum was thicker than I liked as well, so it was going down so slow. But it's got its feed. Um, We'll probably take it in tonight's milking. That's the reason why I want to feed it in the field because it won't be taken in until tonight. So that's me just a way to move the field now. You can see the grass is getting a bit thinner now. Still a bite of grass for them. It's a nice day, so there's no reason why they can't be out today. If you look around St. John's Wells, or Logie, um, it's a beautiful day, um, but grass is starting to get a little bit less. So it'll be this field here, and then that field across, well, next door, and then that'll be the cows in, so probably get some draft and stuff to winter them, obviously, and the main feed is the silage, so looking forward to seeing what the quality of the silage is, because obviously that was a big thing for us cutting it this year a little bit earlier, so I'll be interested to see what that's like. Coming in for another milking. 
Um, just trying to see, I actually got a cow down with milk fever yesterday. Um, managed to get her in, she's on her feet again. Um, but just try to see if she'll take a drink. There's no look as if she is going to. I dare say the first battle is to try and get her on her feet. Um, which we have managed to do. That's actually our second bottle of um, calcium. Normally milk fever is just a um, lack of calcium. Um, but she's drinking, which is another good sign. So I'm hoping to get her in the milk and parlour tomorrow. But um, as I said, she's normally actually when we actually have any cows with milk fever, it's almost certain they need at least two bottles of calcium. So she just had a second one about an hour ago or so. Um, so she's on her feet, it's the main thing. Still a little bit unsteady, but um, we're looking to try and get her into the parlour in the morning. Obviously don't want to take her into the, quite, can be quite slidey and stuff like that in the parlour and that. So don't want to be chancing her in there too early. So hopefully get her in tomorrow morning if she's better but she's a lot better in here than being outside because well the cows were actually dad actually unfortunately let them in i was going to let them in but um you can see the gates trying starting to muck up now um you can see that the gate is actually starting to get mucky now so it's just a uh, just a matter of time now before um Dad's away up the field to get the rest of them and I'll go and give him a hand, but if I don't fall over. But it's just that time of the year when they start to kind of congregate round about the gate. It starts to get really mucky um, and if it continues to rain it just gets worse and worse. So um, we'll get the rest in tonight. Probably already a third up this field already and they've only been in it for, I think maybe this is the fifth day. So they're probably only getting 15 days in each field, might be even less than that field by the time they get to that. Um, so realistically they're going to be in by the end of October, realistically I would imagine. Um, and we're already trying to supplement their feed just now with some silage in the trough, just to keep the milk on them because obviously the colder it gets the worse we're starting to struggle for milk a little bit. Um, so just especially when you get the cold weather and stuff, that really does hit them a little bit. Can, because we're producing milk just for ourselves um, and even 100 litres can be, well it's 180, let me get this right now because we obviously bottle in pints. So 100 litres is 180 bottles short for customers, so totally letting our customers down. So as I said, we're always normally top heavy, we've got a few ice cream manufacturers that does take the surplus, um, but just recently with the dip in weather, it's actually raining, it's starting to rain just now as well. We've actually been struggling. Um, we haven't fell short yet, but um, there's a few occasions we've been pretty close. So hopefully we'll get to the end of October. Fine, we'll get them in, then we'll get them on the nice fresh silage. That's us in the shed now. So that's again, I'll just having some of their silage. So it's just bale silage we're giving them just now. We haven't actually opened the silage pit yet. Hopefully, get that on camera. But that's them just having. Just supplementing them with something else extra, just to keep the milk on them as best we can. And then uh, obviously the girls at this and I just queuing to get into the milk and parlour. So that's me a way to get another milking done. Um, and then hopefully get home to the wife and maybe Owen might still be up. Um, he's not been keeping very well just recently. Um, he's got a really bad cough, so nice to get home in time before he goes to bed, see him before he goes to bed. That's another harvest done. Combine getting moved and the cutter barrel hitched up, ready to go. That is combine in 2022 finished with. We've still actually got one field to bail. Um, I'm not sure when I'm gonna get that done now, to be honest with you. It's, um, it's actually quite a nice afternoon now, but we have a torrential rain today. So apart from that field to combine, the harvest is finally finished. Another baby. She's calved her just now. I think actually she would have calved herself. Calves a little bit tired after just coming out. But he's fine. Uh, actually a heifer, so this is actually her first, first calf. Always like to see them sitting up a little bit. 
um, but he's fine. He's fine, he's just a little bit tired. Um, it's, well, I say it's a he, it's actually a girl. So that is the future of the dairy herd. Um, an Ayrshire, so just like our mummy. So no, please, that's a few dairy calves now. I think that's the second or third in the bounce now, so that's all good. Um, always good to see them calve. Well, I think she would have, as I said, she would have calved herself, but I'm just waiting to start the milk and so I thought I'll just calve her just now. That's me, just the way to get the cows now. Um, that's all I've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a bit more of a weekly. Hopefully try and make that more of a, a thing from now on in. Apologies for lack of video last week. As I said earlier, it's just due to not being very well, but this is what I mean when I say the cows, when it gets this time of the year, there's not as much grass to eat. They start queuing at the gate. They know it's milking time and they just start making a mess. So that's what I mean by, it's just getting to that time, as I said yesterday. Um, it's even, you can see look, while they're in today, it's probably two or three times as bad the gate as it was yesterday. But as the rain comes on, I better go and get them in. But that's it for this week's video. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next week.